Hello, I'm Juliet Schooling Latter from Fund Calibre, and today I'm talking to Nick Williams, manager of Bearings Europe Select Trust. Nick, thank you for joining me. Thank you for having me. Um, firstly, can you tell us a little bit about small and medium sized companies in Europe? Uh, what's the opportunity set? Um, and are there any areas of specialization? Well, the interesting thing about smaller companies is the amount of choice you've got. So when we look at indices of European smaller companies, we're looking at indices that have more than a thousand names in them. And the indices themselves aren't fully representative of all the choice that we have. And so it's a great place to invest, if only because of the wide range of choice. But then when you layer on top of it, some of the strengths of Europe, particularly in renewable energies, in some very forward-looking industries associated with hydrogen, wind, and you also look at some of the niches where Europe has always been strong, like fashion, like automotive, then you find that there are lots and lots of smaller companies where you can play into very specific long-term growth themes. And that's the exciting thing about smaller companies. So it's very broad set and within it, lots of different, very specialized little companies that are very interesting. Well, that sounds like you've got quite a broad range there. Um, are those businesses that are sort of based um, doing their business within Europe or are they more international facing? Well, it's interesting because over European smaller companies as a whole, they're more exposed to Europe than larger companies on average. So as an average, 60% of the sales of European smaller companies are done within Europe, whereas for larger companies, it's more like 50%. But the difference for smaller companies is that some of them are almost 100% domestic, and some of them are almost 100% export-oriented. So again, with that wide range of choice and those different idiosyncratic or specialist ideas you can find, there will be some companies where you can get very, very focused exposure to northern Italy, if that's what you're interested in, or you could find companies that are 100% almost exporting to China. And that's, again, a very exciting opportunity for us to be able to identify companies that are benefiting from both growth themes in terms of industries, but also in terms of populations and geographies. Right. And how has this sector fared in the past few years? You know, we we hear sort of a lot of bad news coming out of Europe, you know, about a weak currency and slow economic growth. Um, what's been the reality for you? It's fascinating, really, because Europe gets a, a, a pretty awful press and, frankly, often for very good reason. Um, the politics isn't ideal. Uh, some of the economic developments, the long-term economic growth rate out of Europe is not very exciting if you compare it to some emerging markets, for example, or even to the US. But smaller companies don't represent the full European economy. Smaller companies represent a niche that isn't really representative of total Europe. And what that means is that you shouldn't look to the GDP growth of Europe to explain the performance of smaller companies. And what that, what that has actually resulted in over the long term for smaller companies is that smaller companies have been a great place to invest, certainly compared to larger companies where uh, small com companies have typically outperformed them in the long term by about an annualized 2% over very long term periods. They do have more volatility. so because of their exposure on average to the domestic European economy, they can be hit by local bumps in the road in terms of economic development. But in the long term, they've been a great place to invest. And that partly reflects the fact that smaller companies grow faster and partly reflects the fact that they are really an undiscovered area. And so they're not very well covered by analysts and that means that if you do your work and you dig into the companies, you might be able to find a gem that has been largely missed. Right. And 
Um, finally, what, what's your outlook for the sector? Um, why should investors consider it in their portfolios? Well, I think the argument for considering it for portfolios is really about some of those benefits we've already discussed. So firstly, the long-term outperformance of smaller companies compared to larger companies. It's the same the world over. If you look at long-term data from the US, if you look at long-term data from the UK, and if you look at Europe as well, in the long term, smaller companies will tend to outperform larger companies. And they do it with more volatility, but over the long term, that volatility and impact gets lessened by the outperformance that they generate compared to larger companies. So they're a great place for a long-term investment thesis. Secondly, Europe has interesting opportunities in the long term surrounding particularly renewables, uh, particularly some niches in tech and healthcare, which are growing very fast and where Europe has a lot of world leading companies. It's, it's often forgotten how many world leaders that we have within the European economy. And these will continue to grow. They'll be supported by the EU Green Deal and the EU Recovery Fund and the rebound from last year's weak markets as a part of the COVID pandemic. But how we predict what's going to happen in the short term, I'm going to be a little bit more cautious about because, frankly, we see a strong economic recovery ongoing. Uh, we see earnings growth picking up. But my job as an investor, I think, is always to think about the risks as well. And so I'm not very keen on making short-term predictions. But as a long-term place to invest, I think European smaller companies is a very attractive asset class. That's interesting. Nick, thank you so much for chatting to me today. Not at all. Thank you. For more information on Bearings Europe Select Trust, please go to fundcalibre.com.